Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time, um, we're having the good folks from NGINX um, talk to us about load balancing applications with the OpenShift NGINX router. Um, and this is, um, I think we did a talk with these guys over, almost over a year ago, so it's a very timely thing, and they've done some really cool work um, with the OpenShift team. And I'm going to let Damien Curry um, introduce it. The format for today, as always, is if you have questions, ask them in the chat. We're going to let Damien um, and the team from NGINX um, do their talk. It's not super long um, and do their demo. Um, and then we'll do live Q&A at the end. So um, please, uh, Damien, without any further ado, take it away and um, let's, let's hear what's going on now. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Damien Curry. I'm the uh, the technical business development manager here at NGINX, and I'm also joined by Michael Pleshenkov, who is one of our engineers who did a lot of the, impl the did the implementation work for this. And so what we're gonna talk about today is load balancing applications with the OpenShift NGINX router. Just a real quick agenda, we're just gonna go over the, the basics of the OpenShift router and as well as our implementation for NGINX running as an OpenShift router. Um, and then we're gonna run through a quick demo just to give you an idea of uh, what it takes to go ahead and deploy the NGINX router in OpenShift. And then we're gonna have some time for some quick questions. So just a very high level, I mean, what is the OpenShift router? The, the OpenShift router is the entry point for all external requests coming into the cluster. It handles routing requests to the different application pods based on URI or host name, as well as other factors that you can use in there as well. And really it is one of the most critical parts of the platform. Um, without the router, there is no way to, to expose your applications publicly from OpenShift. Some of the key features of the OpenShift router are load balancing for HTTP and HTTPS, as well as WebSocket, WebSocket traffic. Um, it can also handle TLS termination, um, TLS termination and then re-encryption to the backend applications as well as pass through TLS. So it's just handling the, handling the connection directly to the application pods. So what we've done here is, is we've built a implementation to be able to run NGINX or NGINX Plus as an OpenShift router. So some of the benefits here is, you know, we, we added in full support for all of the route, router speci specifications. Anything that's pretty much available out there to configure and deploy the router is, is applicable to the NGINX configurations as well. Um, we, we've also added a lot of customization options. Uh, pretty much anything you can do in NGINX is possible to implement in the OpenShift router functionality. Um, as well as, you know, it's just continuing a familiar operational experience. Many people out there are already using NGINX in their infrastructure, and it's good to just have a standard tool, something that you're already used to. So if there are any problems and troubleshooting is necessary, it's something that you're familiar with. Um, as well as we port all of the latest NGINX features to the OpenShift router. For example, uh, we, we just recently added full gRPC support, which is available in our router implementation as well. Um, our implementation is also 100% open source. We've, we've made changes and, and upstreamed them to the OpenShift origin, as well as published some, some different features in our own GitHub repositories as well. And then finally, we also make av available all of the advanced features that are available in NGINX Plus. Um, currently, some of them may take some uh, customization, but they are there. So, you know, how did we do this implementation? So this is all based on the OpenShift template. So just the same templated uh, build, build se selection. Um, in, we've, the only things we've added are, we've added all the image build files. So those are things like the actual NGINX configuration template, a basic Docker file that goes through pulling all the necessary repositories and, and configuring the container as necessary. And then we added a basic reload script and the custom 503 HTML error page um, that if you use OpenStack or OpenShift, you are very familiar with already. Uh, the only other changes we made were to the template helper.go file. So basically all we did was we extended the support to be able to handle NGINX configuration primitives. Uh, most of the information was already in there, but there was a few key points that we needed to add to be able to properly configure an NGINX installation. 
And just to kind of give you an example here, this, this right here on the screen, this is all of the actual code we added to this file. It's very minimal changes. There isn't any extra overhead going on here. So, I mean, in total, it's about 60 lines of code, and that's all that we needed to add to enable Nginx to be able to run as a router. Um, now, obviously, with this thing, I, I cleaned up, took out all the comments just so you could get an idea of what the code looks like. But, you know, very, very simple changes, nothing, nothing that's going to impact the performance of OpenShift. And then, so the key differences with the Nginx and Nginx Plus router, both the Nginx and Nginx Plus routers are fully support the route specification. Um, if you do choose to go with our enterprise product, Nginx Plus, we do have, currently have a few extra advanced features that are enabled um, in the router installation mainly being our, our status API and our monitoring dashboard, which is something that exposes a lot more information about what is actively going on with the, install, with the Nginx installation in real time. And, you know, again, we will be extending the support of this to add in more of the features that, you know, are available in our enterprise subscription that are not available in the open source. So those, those are, will be coming down the line event soon. All right, and then real quick, we're just gonna run through a, a fast demo here. Um, so first, we're just going to do a very basic setup. It's, we just, all you have to do is go in, delete the default router. We're going to go ahead and deploy the Nginx Plus router. And then we're going to go ahead and, you know, it just basically expose a very simple web application just to verify everything's working and up and running. So we will go ahead and come over here. And so what I've already done here is we've already built the Nginx Plus image. Um, we built the image, uh, created it, built the container, everything's up and running, um, and then we went ahead and just uploaded it to the service, the service registry that is built as part of OpenShift. And so now we'll just go from here and we can walk through the last couple of steps to go ahead and get this in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're simply going to do a quick backup of the default router. If I have the correct command. All right, so now we got it backed up just in case something happens and we do have to roll back. We have a we have a good solution there. Next, we'll just go ahead and delete that router. Double check, make sure it's terminating there. And now as we can see, all so now we can see that the image registry has become unavailable because the router is no longer online. Now, as we've already uploaded the Nginx Plus image, we can simply deploy the new router with a single command here. So we're just going to go ahead and deploy a new router, um, and we're specifying the Nginx Plus router image that we already created and uploaded to our registry. And then we're simply tagging it with the region infra to go ahead and make sure it gets deployed on the master nodes in this cluster that we're using. Um, and, and just so you, everybody is aware, this is a three node cluster running uh, OpenShift 3.9 based in AWS. So now we can see that that has already deployed. Let's check here. Okay, and so we've got the deploy pod is up and running. So now we should be able to wait a couple minutes here as all of the pods spin up and we have a router up and running. So now we should be able to go back here and we have log into our registry. So everything is up and running again. And what we will do is one last quick change. We're gonna open up a IP tables port so that we can reach the status dashboard. Um, and now we can see, if we refresh this page, here's the, this is the, uh, the status page for Nginx Plus. So you can get an idea of some of the different metrics that we are exposing and the different information that you can see. So that's just with it running um, currently with just the Docker registry behind it. And so real quick, we're going to go ahead and deploy an example application here that we distribute with our, with the GitHub repo for the Nginx Plus router. And so what we're doing here is just doing a basic application with uh, two, two applications running behind the cafe.example.com domain. Um, and also running, creating two routes for the two different applications. So one will be behind slash T and the other one will be behind slash coffee. So you can already see that we have some new server zones being generated. So you can see the cafe.example.com. And then we can also see that we have some new configurations running here. 
So the next thing we can do is we go back, we can go ahead and refresh. And now obviously I've uh, modified my host file to point example.com at my cluster here. And see, now we can see that we have an application up and running. Granted, we are very basic here, just showing that we are seeing two different applications running in two different pods. So that's it. That's, that's all that's necessary to do to build uh, the Nginx Plus router and, and get it running in an OpenShift environment. And from there, everything can be handled um, as, as you would in any other router situation. Um, so that's, that pretty much covers everything for the, for the demo. We'd like to open it up for any Q&A here. If anybody has any questions, we'd, we'd love to hear them. So um, this is Diane, and um, uh, this, is, it, this is great. So this is um, basically allowing um, folks to replace the, um, default, the de facto router that comes with um, OpenShift. Um, what happens, uh, is the de facto router still running out there, or are you running in tandem? Um, um, just a... No, so yeah, one of the first uh, steps we had there was actually to disable and, and turn off the default router. Now, okay. it, what, we, what we like to make clear here is that this is not an, an add-on router or anything like this. This is a new default. So now going forward, instead of having the default only option be the HA proxy based router, you will be able to decide whether you want to deploy with the HA proxy based router or the NGINX based router. They're both 100% support, will be 100% supported in Origins, and they'll be available right out of the box. Awesome. And is this available in this current release of OpenShift, or is this um, in the next one? Where, what is the status? This, this will be in the next release in, in 3.10. Um, so with, okay. with this image, when I'm, when I'm building this, I was using, so I, I was installing on a 3.9 installation, but when I built the Nginx uh, router image, it was built using the 3.10 uh, base image because we just had our, uh, the code changes up, upstream to mainline. All right. Um, there's a number of people listening in, but uh, I haven't seen any questions yet. Is there anyone with um, um, questions for Michael or Damien? I can see. I think you've done a pretty good job, and it's not that complicated, which is pretty um, awesome. Let's see. There's one. one. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the big, that's the big upside and downside for this. It's a, it's a very yeah. simple, very basic. We wanted to just keep it as easy as possible. You know, the real solution here is we just want to provide the users with a, with a different alternative, you know, just to give them choices so that they're not walked into using one solution for the router. Uh, no, I think this is great. And, you know, it's, it, it is, it's uh, um, relatively simple to do. So I'm hoping that some of you that are listening in will, um, Give us your feedback on it, and um, once you've tried it out and tested it, um, give, you reach out to the folks at um, NGINX and give them their feedback as well. And um, when 3.10 comes out, um, we'll see, um, see some good adoption, I'm, I'm hoping, for this offering. So um, thank you very much um, for taking the time today and um, giving us uh, this, this overview and insights into how to use it. Um, Michael, is there anything that you wanted to add to this that, that maybe Damien missed? Uh, no, I think Damien covered everything. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Um, and, and I have to say, uh, Damien and Michael, this is the perfect length briefing. So um, I think we've done, we figured out how to, how to keep it in succinct chunks of information. And um, I'll, I'll get this uploaded onto YouTube shortly, and we'll see if we can't get you some feedback on this and um, watch it take off like um, hotcakes. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for the time. And yeah, please let us know if there's if there's any questions or, or anything anybody would like to know more about. We're, we're more than happy to help. All right. Thank you, guys.